Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Old bridge. Look at that bad boy. It says five miles an hour, five tons. I didn't drive over it. Came in from the other way. Gonna have to have a talk with my sales guy. He described the tree well, a heavily leaning tree over the house. You know, oak tree. And he said 14 inch diameter, but I don't see an orange ribbon. You know, what's the most expensive tree? The one that wasn't supposed to be removed. And this one is over another tree. Let's see if there's any others leaning over the house. No. It's got to be this bad boy. It's Baroque. It sways pretty bad in the wind, they say. They have no shortage of trees. It's a beautiful little area out in the country. Some windmills out there producing heavy electricity. <laughs> Not. All right, so Tarzan Taylor is going to do the climbing. We'll have to piece it out, avoid hurting that hickory. We could put a block up in here. His climbing line could be up in this oak. This little oak here. I think we got a plan. Kind of tied up in that hickory, though. Oh, sun. Sorry. Didn't mean to get blind, you guys. Yeah, it's in that hickory pretty good. It could be Mickey mousing around. We'll get her, though. Should be okay. What a morning. All right, so this is the tree we're taking down. With a heavy lean and behind it is a fairly tall comparatively uh, red oak that we can tie into and I threw a line and it was a pretty narrow uh, you know crotch up there that I wanted to get in so I threw it up and over and now it came down next to a union I want to drop into and so I connect a second throw line with a big, heavy, big Dan carabiner. And so my orange throw ball is gonna be the one I keep. The pink is gonna be discarded. And I'm gonna drop this line right into the crotch that I want. So let's see if I can show this manipulation with one hand. Get her bouncing around. That's a little high. I want her on the next one down. Right there. Right there. What am I on? A little twig? All right. I'm... Oh no, I'm just, yeah, I'm up on a little twig. That'll pull off. So, we drop that all the way down. Now I have an isolated line. I could set a canopy anchor on that. I got a little rat's nest there. That'll come out. So I can set a canopy anchor. This isn't that tall. It's like 45, 50 feet up there. So our rope would be long enough to set a canopy anchor. And it's kind of a small, small branch. But with a canopy anchor, it'll be just fine. All right, now a key aspect to this is this is the one I want. Oh, well, let's verify. Yes, <laughs> that's the one I want. I'm gonna take this out. Do not leave this in the tree while you uh, pull up the other one. You're just, you're asking for, it's gonna, it's gonna snag, it's gonna tangle, it's gonna everything. So at any rate, always take the carrier line out before you pull the rope up. Here comes Tarzan Taylor with the 
big boy. He might chip this whole thing. So talking it over with Taylor, I was gonna put a canopy anchor on that. So there you go, you dropped in. Oh, I had it elevated so you were supposed to go right through. <laughs> there you go, you got it. But anyways, yeah, put a canopy anchor since that's so wobbly. So we had an item to prune this hickory too. So we're gonna, for roof clearance, we're gonna take this lateral off here that hangs right over the roof. So we've got a rigging point on the oak above it. And then there's a lead that goes out the other way. It's gonna be in the sun, can't show you. Come back this way. Uh, there's a lead over here above the hickory. It's got a tall lateral on it. He's gonna lanyard into that and he can just kind of muscle that lead out of there and toss it down here. Uh, we got dead wood and roof clearance on the hickory. So just a couple little, little sprigs, a few sprigs of dead wood. And so he'll run up there and probably drop into the hickory, scoot around and go back up in the oak. Have a good day here. So he's making a, a bowling. Uh, he made a butterfly, butterfly knot. Drop the end through there, run that up, and we got a canopy tie. Just that simple. So by by doing that little slick trick with the throw lines, that automatically gets you an isolated line. And of course, for this canopy tie, you need an isolated line. So. That worked out Half well. Half the weight on the branch, too. Half the weight on the branch. Well, your actual weight on the branch right. versus double your weight. If we if we were to tie that end off down here, and we got leverage then on that limb. But now it's just a straight static pull on the limb with just his weight. And his weight's less than my weight. <laughs> just saying. All right. So you see, it's nice having that higher canopy anchor because he's kind of climbing out a pretty heavy leaner. So it's nice to have that back, back support. You're on a little twig, yeah. up there, put a redirect in, drop into the hickory. <laughs> World of inches. Classic downspout, we're okay. Right in the ground, buddy. <laughs> It'll come through. Oh, I'm going to finish with his handsaw. Setting up a redirect. 
He's gonna put his rigging point in. Then he's gonna drop down into the hickory. Should piece out pretty quick, but we'll get that hickory branch out of the way, get the hickory prune done, and then finish top. There's one more dead piece out that limb if you haven't seen it. Oh, Hickory wasn't arguing with you, was it? What? Hickory wasn't arguing with you, was it? Hickory never argues. Yeah. You can't even get a little branch out of the tree. Oh yeah, the shaggy bark. Oh, that'll rip up your skin too. ground is pretty hard. those few couple suckers right down low by the roof before you come out of there. tower line the other day when I was taking down that big oak on the house the tower line the speed line half inch kern mantle yeah and the akimbo was very responsive to that when we go to door county I'm gonna I'll have my climbing equipment along I'll uh I'm gonna practice that definitely for an ascent line in Guatemala, but it might be the preferred line on the akimbo maybe. Cause it's a little stiffer. Yeah, I'm ready. Who would think it? Yeah. 
Everybody's into the 32 strand climbing lines. But maybe, just maybe, that static line, especially for ascending with the akimbo. For anybody wondering, yes, he is footlocking with spikes on, <laughs> with spurs on. Don't try this at home. So if I saw that correctly, he's, he's locking with his heel. Yeah. You know, and oftentimes when we're footlocking a single line, we lock with our toe so that you get a better grip. So that it's definitely not with your instep because the rope will slide through your instep. But here with the, with the spurs on, he was, he was locking with the heel of his cover foot. So anyways, little tip for those who might wonder or want to emulate. <laughs> I got the uh, I got the porter wrap set up down here. If you want to take like a big piece, so pull all the slack out with this. You always want to keep the rotation in the same direction. Never double back. It creates a, a tight bend in the rope. All right, I got it. Let me move this out of the way. Did we break a little hickory branch? Many riggers get very used to somebody coming and grabbing the branch for them. I've even seen riggers stand around and wait for someone to come and help them. <laughs> well, how am I going to handle the branch? You just do it. That's how you handle it. That's why you have these little posts on the porter wrap and the pigtail on the GRCS. I don't have it. How big is this? I got hand right I got this. I'll tell you, if a, if a branch pulls me off the ground, it, it's a branch. Yeah, maybe. Do you have one? Do you have one? Should be one in the bucket in the chip jar. You're able to pull that up? Or do I gotta pull that up for you? <laughs> Get it up there faster. Take note, Kevin's dragging.
Yeah. We do have the mini along, which I'll probably get for the log, but you know. We don't have to use the mini for everything. The grass is kind of dry, so you tend to break over a lot of grass when you drive on it. So try to keep that to a minimum. All right. Bigger. Okay, then I'm, I'll, I'll take a little wrap. Taylor says it's twice the size. That would have been a little bit to handle. Right. Tried to let it run for you. A little bit of flex. Yeah, this is when we can make fun of all the ground guys. When we're two climbers on a job. The drop zone's too small. Use the swing. Yeah, two self-righteous climbers on the job. And when they see us bad-mouthing them, they won't be in our presence to, you know, be snarky right back. I suppose they could leave comments. They could. Is that rigged? Always pull the slack out by pulling directly away from the angle of pull on the porter wrap. You know, we hardly use porter wraps here. I was showing how to tie these off by, you know, taking wraps on and stuff. And somebody said, how come you, is that a training problem at Ham's Arbor Care? Like, I was buyer number four of the GRCS. I've hardly used these. And my guys have hardly used them. Pull that up. Uh, or do you want me to flip it to you? Uh, you can... I'll leave it hang. Uh, yeah, so is the how to tie off a porter wrap a training issue at Ham's Arbor Care? Yeah, because we never use it. The GRCS, you just take a bunch of wraps and put it in the self tailor. Here, you take a bunch of wraps. And then you do a half hitch. You know, you put a twist in the rope, half hitch. Maybe two, <coughs> which is a clove hitch. So, anyways, somebody asked, rather reputable person asked, is that a training issue? No, just if you're not very familiar with the Porter app, it can be. Are you gonna run out there and piece that down? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best way. Oh, that's heavy. Don't tell anybody I cut this up. Ugh. Better go get the mini.
cutting with the dogwood by all gear pan. Might make this the midweek relief this next week. Or if Justin's having trouble with the with the main video, I can put it up tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm still on. Yeah, you're in there. Oh, yeah. Make sure you're in there. So the handsaw is a useful tool, folks. I think the angle was too high to catch me dragging brush. That's, that's sad. You know, back at the federal prison, they said if it wasn't in the log book, it wasn't, it didn't happen. Taylor's being snarky up there about one-handing. You see, I am carrying. See, he got that whole thing down without one hand in his saw. It can be done. What he did is he cut the notch with his saw and then he just has to cut an inch of back cut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He says pride comes before the fall. He dropped his handsaw. He had to make a back cut. And he got pulled out by that last rig. So then he uh, he had to use his chainsaw for the back cut with two hands and then catch the piece. But anyways, kind of funny. He's being snarky and his handsaw gets taken away from him. Morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Well, we're here father, son, and having a Saturday morning together. <laughs> what? Is this what you do for fun? Yeah. No.
it goes touchscreen vertical, it, it punches the wood towards the seat. And then you can size it. And, and so you can uh, you know, piece the piece down like that all the way. And then for, for the ones that were really reaching over the house, you, you've got that pulley up there, and I've got a piece of a pushing device on it. And so when we put it on a string, and we hold it. That's an amazing time. <laughs> yeah. We're actually making a video today. Oh. So this will be on our YouTube channel. But you probably can't get there. My phone's way over there. So I'm just making a phone, phone video. But we, uh, if you go to Game of Tunes, So he left a good hinge. Bur oak is good for a hinge. So he left a good hinge. So we could bring that over slow and not have it flopping around all dynamic like. Oh, there's a handsaw on the ground here, buddy. Yeah. You want to back up there? He uses the Zobat. Taylor says it is it is a shell, so you'll have to put my handsaw back on my rope. <laughs> Making note of the Z133. A climber shall enter the tree with a handsaw. So and I believe you shall have a handsaw in an aerial device as well. I mean, I, could, I couldn't live without one myself. It's just it's what I do. People comment, man, I can't believe you're manhandling all those with a handsaw. It's just what I've done for 25 years. And I didn't wear out. That's what everybody says. Well, you wear out if you have to do it like that. I didn't, I'm not worn out. Um, yeah, let me, let me get up. We're on the rig, right? Yeah, I would, uh... Am I able to let it run? Well, like, to the ground, but I'm, I'm three feet above the ground. Yeah, I'll, I'll let her, I'll let her fly. Let take a few seconds just to give her a little bit. Wait, let me get this saw out of the way. So I'm going to try to let this run all the way. to the chipper. You could do a one fist to trunk and drop her flat right there. Or we could do one more one more rig like that. 
two more chunks off there and we can uh I'll take a rig and then a chunk. Okay, rig and a chunk. Rig and a chunk, that's it. I'll take a rig for a chunk. So we've got we got pretty hard ground with the drought, it's kind of droughty. So we lean, it's angling towards the house, so it might on the hard ground have a bounce, unanticipated. So I was talking about taking one fifth the trunk, having it land flat. Still might bounce and the momentum, because of the lean, might take it towards the house. So we're gonna put one more on a string and then we'll do a, a flop. The other issue here is we only have a half inch rope and so you know letting them run like that all the way to the ground you're not you're not going to shock load your, your rope so now we got a pretty big chunk he took the sling off and he's tying directly so we have the most strength you got a sling in the system oh I see. Our our block is still on a light sling. So that's even it's even you know a greater concern. So you know I'm letting this run all the way to the ground. We're not catching it. No real risk. Okay? So I virtually didn't stop that. I just let the friction run. You want to flop that right on this? Really? There you go, right next to it. You want a measurement on that? It's 36 feet tall. You can take a seven foot piece, six, six and a half ish, a little less than one fifth the length of the trunk will get a full revolution and land flat. <laughs> Not quite. Are you longer than six and a half? Let's step her off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Six and a half would have done it, buddy. All right. Take one more. Now you're uh, 29 feet, so five and a half feet. There you go. Nice. All right. Good job, Taylor.
Now demonstrate that line pull up. Our canopy anchor. Oh, we got a little branch in between. go and we're clear good job Taylor yeah. Yeah. I think it's the only one I really bug is Mark but he doesn't say so opinion on a short spar like this a short stump you know the best place for this chunk of wood is on this stump why do we want to take away another little piece of wood we got enough little piece of wood put that piece of wood on the bottom of the stump Good 
ship that bad boy? Let's show them what it'll do. Or just chip that log first. So, for anybody that thinks this is a waste of time to bring a grub axe to a stump grind, this is five minutes. Thirty minutes of changing teeth. Thirty minutes of changing teeth. Wow. I'm not gonna go too deep. <laughs> wow. Big one. Looks limestone-ish, but still. Incredible.
playing the game of trees. Well, here we are. Hickory's pruned nicely off the house. Big leaning tree is gone. Tarzan Taylor putting away his stuff. Game of trees. We're ready to roll. It's 11 o'clock. So we got here a little after 8. Like and subscribe. Hope your day is as pretty as this. See you next time. Playing the game of trees.